the Narzo 30 Pro unboxing. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen enough of those. Now, we've had the Narzo 30 Pro in studio for about a week. So instead of just unboxing the video and talking and telling you what the brand wants us to tell you, I thought let's start off with a full review. So we've been using the phone for a week. And in this video, let's see how pro the Narzo 30 Pro is. So hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retail. Great, come and subscribe. You know what to do. Let's get to the full review. Of course, I said this is not an unboxing, but hey, for those curious, here's what we get in the box. Now that that's done with, let's start with some of the pros of the Narzo 30 Pro. Stupid puns apart, the refresh rate, it's 120Hz and the touch sampling is 180. So everything feels pretty fluid and responsive with this phone. We love the time we spent with this display. This here is a 6.5 inch Full HD Plus panel. Now given the price point and the fact that it's 120Hz, of course it's not AMOLED. Now a lot of people would take a 90Hz AMOLED over a 120Hz IPS LCD and this is something Xiaomi found out the hard way. Actually, they did post a poll, Xiaomi, Poco, whatever, one of the Xiaomi brands, they posted a poll about what people would pre prefer so that they can go on stage and say, hey, we asked you guys, the users, and you said you wanted a faster refresh, me fans. So this is for you, but no, the poll did not go the way they wanted it to. So they ended up deleting it. But the moral of the story here, I'm not saying this just so that I can make fun of Xiaomi. I like making fun of Xiaomi, but that's that's not besides the point here. The, the moral of the story is that majority of people seem to prefer AMOLED, even if it's only 90 Hertz compared to you know, a 120 Hertz IPS LCD. That said, this panel still got good colors for an LCD. The contrast is great and so are the viewing angles. Well, me and a lot of you would have preferred to see AMOLED even if at a lower refresh, Given the price point, the, this quality 120Hz uh, IPS LCD, I can't really call that a con of, can I? Okay, I've droned on and on and on about the display, but it's wor basically worth shit if the chip inside fails to deliver. And I'm happy to say that that is not the case here. Realme has gone with the MediaTek Dimensity 800U, which is quite excellent for the budget. I mean, I've had my differences with MediaTek because I refused to say what they wanted me to say. Uh, but still, that doesn't mean I'm gonna take a shot at this because the 800U is actually an excellent chip. MediaTek chips these days, they have been punching way above their weight class. Unless you take into account that P35 on that 13,000 rupee phone. If you know the one I'm talking about, leave a comment down below. And I'm pretty sure some YouTubers have already called it amazing, but I'm not really gonna go there. Uh, that is another video, a very interesting video. So no spoilers on that. Today we are talking about the Narzo 30 Pro and the Dimensity 800U. With day-to-day -day use, this combination proved to be very smooth and responsive. Now, we didn't come across any lag or delays. Even while gaming, the performance was quite good. The phone did get a little warm. Not hot, just warm. By the way, one thing worth noting is high settings are actually grayed out with Call of Duty Mobile. Uh, but with normal, the gameplay experience was quite enjoyable. From a performance perspective, we could and probably still can, this, can say the same things about the Narzo 20 Pro, right? So how does this actually stack up compared to that Helio G95 chip on the 20 Pro? Roughly, you can say it's about 20% better. At least that's what we get to see with benchmarks. With practical use, it's good enough to power that 120Hz panel. And that's pretty much what we can ask for in this segment, right? Okay, great performance, good display, Next is battery life. There's a 5000 mAh battery here and hey, Realme still included charger in the box. So that's a huge positive these days. It's not just any charger. It's actually a 30 watt fast charger. Uh, so zero to 100 in about an hour, zero to 50 in about 25 minutes. Uh, and now also note that apart from this proprietary dark charge, the Narzo also supports 15 watt uh, USB PD. So if you don't actually carry your proprietary charger out with yourself, you're still not going to be uh, having to deal with trickle charging for a 5000 mAh battery. That would be stupid. So hey, uh, with battery life as well, just like with its predecessor, this Narzo also continues to impress. Even with heavy use, we were able to get the 30 Pro to last through a full day on a single charge. So that's 
pretty nice. Now, given that there is a 5000 mAh battery on the inside, Realme still managed to keep the weight under 200 grams. Generally, when the battery capacity increases, one of the trade-offs is gonna be weight. It keeps getting heavier and heavier. But now, this is under 200 grams, but that is a pro as well as a con. It's a pro because, hey, they've managed the weight. But the con is that they've had to use plastic to achieve this. Plastic, of course, means, you know, the in-hand feel goes away. Uh, and plastic also tends to pick up scratches faster. And talking about scratches, Realme has not mentioned anything about protection for the display. So these do take away from the build. Uh, the device though has expandable storage, but it's, it's a hybrid slot. The 30A, it has a triple card slot. Even the 20 Pro had a triple card slot. So now this has gotten two Pro uh, for itself, I guess. I would have loved to see a triple card slot. Anyway, now before we jump to optics, let's quickly take a look at the rest of the stuff, the sun trees. Now, because this is an LCD panel, they can't go for an under display fingerprint scanner. Technically, yes, they could. Thus, there was some kind of teasers we saw about LCD panels getting under display fingerprint scanners, but commercially to the uh, actual consumer, it still not happened. So Realme had to go with a fingerprint scanner under the power key. The placement feels natural and in our time with it, it came across as very responsive and accurate. I don't think we ever needed to scan, uh, scan twice to get in. There's also face unlock, which works about as well as expected. To the top, there's a headphone jack, the output via which is, well, like pretty much every other phone in this segment, nothing special. But hey, these days, the presence of a headphone jack itself is something special, right? So points to Realme for that. Uh, there is, for whatever it's worth, a built-in equalizer. Uh, it's little software touches like these that I appreciate. Other software features here include, uh, well, smooth scrolling, OSI visual effect, game space, smart sidebar, they make a return. This MediaTek chip pairs pretty well with the software. Uh, and I'm just droning on and on about software. I'm just talking about stuff we already know because this phone's launched with Realme UI 1.0 on top of Android 10, not the latest 2.0. So there's not really a lot new for me to talk about, which is why I have been giving you this runabout here. Uh, but jokes apart, the performance is good. Uh, no doubt about it, but I, I, I really think that Realme at this point should have launched this phone with Realme UI 2.0. They do stay, state that an, an update is on the way, but uh, it would be better if brands actually launch, uh, I mean, launch something with the software they want to launch it with instead of promise updates because that would uh, let us actually review the phone with the software that you're expecting to use it on. Because let's say a month from now, a few weeks from now, they come out with Realme UI 2.0. Not a lot of, uh, I mean, most people don't even review the phone. They just do unboxings uh, and repeat whatever is in the so-called reviewer's guide and whatever the brands want to tell you. But even those few people who end up reviewing it, we review it at the start, which means the updated version generally, we don't cover it. And uh, if there are any bugs, we can't really tell you guys about it. So, hey, it's not a big deal, but I would have preferred to see this come out with Realme UI 2.0. Uh, and if you want to know what all features Realme UI 2.0 brings with it, here's a card to my dedicated video on it. And now with all that said and done, let's move on to cameras for selfies. There's a 16 megapixel snapper. The picture shot, they turned out crisp with ample detail. The portraits too, they turned out fair. Subject isolation, edge deduction, on point for the most part. At times the colors do tend to appear a little washed out. Now the rear cameras, Narzo 20 Pro had a quad camera setup. The 30 Pro only has three. Is that a downgrade? Nope. I mean, cry me a river here. Uh, the sensor that's cut is the depth sensor. Now, despite that being cut, the portrait shot still came out good. Again, subject isolation, edge deduction, not really uh, a lot of difference. So I don't care if they've cut it out. The primary sensor is 48 megapixels paired with the f1.8 lens and colors were natural for the most part. At times it was a little cool, but hey, it was an outlier more than uh, the regular whatever we got. Dynamic range was good too. The secondary 8 megapixel ultra wide, of course, it takes, an, it takes a hit on detail as expected, but Realme has done a good job in keeping the colors similar to the primary. The 2 megapixel macro sensor is there. That's all I get to say about macro sensors. Don't get me started on sensor counts. Anyways, uh, the videos, it can shoot up to 4K 30. 
uh, there's a fair bit of, bit of focus hunting here and of course there's no stability so 4k 30 is this isn't footage i'd call very usable but when you drop down to 1080p the situation improves stable footage no focus hunting so the optics here i'd say it's pretty powerful the course so guys the change in setup and everything is because i don't want to actually shoot this video and tell you guys i don't know what the official price is so i waited uh waited till the price dropped to shoot this part of the video so now we know the official pricing is seventeen thousand rupees that's what it starts at that's two thousand rupees more than what the narzo 20 pro came in at and the narzo 20 pro came just in september so it's it's been what around uh, four or five months here and they've cranked up the base variant by 2000 rupees and for this 2000 rupees what do we get a 20 percent better processor 30 hertz extra refresh uh, we've got slower charging uh, no dedicated micro sd so those are things we've lost out on we've lost out on a depth sensor but nobody gives a about that uh, and a marginally higher capacity battery so if you look at it just as an upgrade is it a decent upgrade as in just from a specs perspective these days with the way mid-rangers get refreshed hey it's pretty decent uh no arguments there and it's not a bad phone at all but has realme done enough to warrant a generational hike of 2000 rupees uh, i can't honestly say yes here is it a good phone again it's not a bad phone at all but it's effectively the same optics uh, marginally improved performance that kind of gets offset by the increase in, increase in refresh rate uh, and the battery capacity has grown but the charging has gone down so it's it's an it's a decent upgrade but it most definitely i don't feel it warrants an increase in price because every year or rather every generation technology changes technology evolves uh, and we get better performance for the same price and that is how certain lines of phones work but over here uh, if they've offered something that they haven't at all then maybe we could justify the 2000 rupee price hike but over here uh, i feel this phone would have been a lot more competitive if, if it came in at 15000 rupees uh, so at least that's what i feel about it i feel it's a once again sorry to uh, go around in circles i feel this is a good phone that's been priced a little higher than it should be so should you buy it if you want to buy it the answer is yes you could still buy it but know that you're not getting as good a deal as you got with the narzo 20 pro uh, it is not uh, extremely good value it's okay -ish good value so that's what i'd say about i mean and again again i say it's okay -ish good value because we have to take into account that there are brands who are selling helio p35s for 14000 rupees 13 14000 rupees so you can't really trip about this much so anyway trace guys so those are my thoughts on the narzo 30 pro what do you guys think uh like this video hate this video you have any constructive criticism to offer you feel uh i mean that's with the video with the phone you feel uh realme should have done something differently they should have been more competitive with the pricing whatever you think let me know in the comments below uh and with that we are at the end of this video and uh, thanks a lot for your time thanks a lot for watching until next time my name is ash you've been watching c4e tech and i'm signing off for now you guys have a great day bye bye